All right, so this is one of the most important figures for you to understand. If you can understand this, and you can, I uh, will ask you to fill one out or draw one in some form or fashion. Um, there's a couple different permutations, you know, what I put on top and what I put on bottom. But if you can understand this diagram, which I do have a lecture about, then you can answer questions without having to think about the answers every single time. Because that'll take you too long and it's just, you, you know, it's just more confusing than if you can understand this. So this is basically that cycling thing. Um, so I'm going to do this. And in this case, last time in the other lecture, I had um, first to first and second to second. But some people find it easier for the insides to the outsides, and I kind of agree. Um, I didn't... Um, Um, one of my students at, at one point mentioned that this would be easier, and so this is how I can do it and show you this way. Okay, so basically I'm doing colors to show what molecules convert to each other, and then we'll see the processes that do that. There's an extensive, like I said, extensive lecture on this, so I just want to reiterate how important this is. Okay, so we know that um, energy comes into and out of the system, and in this case, I'm drawing uh, light energy here, and light energy is the input for um, almost all <clears throat> um, living systems. Uh, there are some bacteria that can use chemicals, like ones that live down in rocks and um, ones that live at the bottom of the, the ocean in sulfur vents, and they can use chemicals instead of light energy, but in general, the light energy is the energy coming into the system, especially, obviously, if we're talking about photosynthesis. So light energy comes in, so you know this top process here must be photosynthesis, because that's the one that gets the light energy in, and um, we'll do what comes into that. So we know one molecule that goes into photosynthesis is water. So let's just trace that conversion. So water is going to be converted to and then oxygen when it's split. It's photosynthesis, extensive lecture on that. Um, and this occurs in the light reactions. Makes sense because light's involved directly there. And then uh, let's do the backwards part. On the bottom side here, I'm drawing the other process of conversion, which in this case is your cellular respiration. And let's look at where the oxygen comes back into water, and that is through the process called oxidative phosphorylation. And you don't need to be scared of this word, even though it's long. Um, we just break it down. Oxidative means oxygen dependent. This. So oxidative means oxygen is needed. Phosphorylation, phospho, is the phosphate group. And often when we talk about the phosphate group, we talk about making ATP. So the phosphorylation is just putting the phosphate onto ADP to make it ATP, and so that's an output here. It's the um, major, it's a molecule, but it's an energy output, ATP, and ATP's job is to go do work in the cell. Okay, so that's ultimately the light energy um, is transferred into this, uh, and then that is transferred into the ATP. Okay, so oxidative phosphorylation just means oxygen dependent, putting phosphate onto ADP to make ATP. Um, that's the, out, the one conversion. The other conversion is the other input into photosynthesis, so um, photosynthetic or photoautotrophic organisms take in CO2. That's why, you know, cutting down so many trees is problematic because they, they lose the ability to take CO2 up from the atmosphere. So maybe you can think of it like that. A lot of people know CO2 is what plants take in. 
Um, and that comes out as what I call carbon compounds. The reason I call it that is mostly, uh, well, first of all, the first product out of photosynthesis is G3P, converted into glucose, can be converted into sucrose, can be converted into starch, can be converted into um, uh, cellulose. And then particularly I call it carbon compounds instead of glucose because in the, the um, process of the cellular respiration, it's not just glucose that can be converted. You can have, uh, you know, you can use proteins for energy. You can use lipids for energy. You can um, use glucose, uh, break down starch into glucose. And remember, it's not just us doing this process of cellular respiration. Plants do it too. Um, almost all organisms do. And so I like to call it carbon compounds to remind us that it's not just glucose that can be used. So let's see here. So the process that takes the carbon to carbon compounds and look at that. So people get confused because they want to say, oh, gas to gas, but it's not true. C has to go to C. Where in the world are you going to get the carbon compounds if you're not using carbons? So carbon dioxide can't go to oxygen. Where did the carbons go? They would have disappeared. That's not right. So carbon has to go to carbon. It's, it's easy to remember that. And the nice thing here is that all the cycles go with the carbons. So, so the Calvin cycle goes with the CO2 to uh, carbon compounds, and then the citric acid cycle goes from carbon compounds, breaks them back down into CO2. And I'll give you a little rundown of that in another lecture. Um, there's also another process that is going to do the conversion uh, and breakdown of carbon compounds into CO2, and it is the, I call it the oxidation. There are other ways you could say about this. You could call it the uh, processing of pyruvate. You could call it, oh, what do people say? Um, I don't, can't remember anything else off the top of my head, but there are a number of ways to say it, but this is how we do it. Oxid, ooh, that's wrong. Oxidation, oxidation, and I'll, of, pyruvate, which can be said pyruvate or pyruvate, it's okay with either, oxidation of pyruvate, and so what that means is that you're extracting electrons. Um, I'll do a little thing about oxidation reduction so you can watch that if you don't know what oxidation and reduction mean. Um, but this is the basic overall um, cycle. There is also heat lost. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Heat, that's a d very disordered energy that's lost through processes, uh, can't be used by living systems. It's too disordered. But that is part of the energy flow. So the energy flow, hmm, let's see how this goes. Uh, we'll do it here. It goes from light into the carbon compounds into ATP. So I'm, that is the flow of the energy. And then you can see there's, there's the, the um, molecules that are just cycling. Okay, so please make sure you can understand this and then you can just refer to it as you do your questions on the exam.